in unison, Lord, from our homes, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for being the risen king. I thank you, Lord, for overcoming death. I thank you, Lord, for, for giving us strength and, and comfort, Lord, during this season that we are experiencing right now, Father. I pray, Father, for our extended family, Father, not just in this area, but across the nation and, and across the world, Father, that you, Lord, meet their needs, Father, that you give them comfort and strength during this situation, Father, that you give them, Father, those who are not used to being isolated and set apart, Father, give them comfort, Father, lift their spirits, Father, for those who are essential workers, Father, we continue to lift them up in prayer, Father, and we ask that, that your blood covers them, Father, that your blood keeps them safe, Father. Father, I thank you, Lord, for, again, Lord, for allowing us to come together, Father, that as we transition from worship and just service, Father, that, Lord, we are able to fully open up our hearts and our minds, Father, to hear the word that you have for us this day, Father. So I'd like to welcome our Zoom family members who are watching and, and also our Facebook family members and church members who are watching as well. And I will turn it over to Sister Sabrina for announcements. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome to uh, service today. Uh, we'd like to welcome any visitors that we have today. And then of course, welcome to all the members that have been joining us. We'd like to go ahead and get started with the um, announcements that we have for you all this week. We'd like to also mention that we have your different ways to give. Uh, just because we're not in the building, we do have the other ways that you can give. So you can uh, mail in the items to uh, mail in your tithes and offering to the church directly. If you wanna come to the office, just give us a call or shoot us an email to make an appointment. And then you can also use Cash App. There's a lot of online shopping. E-commerce is a big thing now. And so if you're shopping online with Amazon, uh, choose items that are saying Amazon Smile uh, and then pick Bethel Worship Center as your charity of choice. Mm -hmm. And so those items will go directly to um, the church. Also, we have every Monday, we have virtual children's church. The children are having a wonderful time with that. So please Please uh, have your children join, uh, join in as well if you would like in the background, but it is focused for the children. Have them invite their friends when they attend Google Classroom as well, um, and then the neighbors as well, but make sure you stay the six feet away when you're inviting, do it through text or email. We also have noonday prayer every weekday, Monday through Friday. Uh, we have a Zoom that you can actually just click the link to come into, or you can call the number that's listed. If you need the information, um, the information is here on the slide. You can also visit our website. We also have our food pantry that's open Tuesdays and Thursdays from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. If you are in need or you know someone in need, please send them our way. We are there from five to six. We do need volunteers to help bag up items from three to six. So if you're not comfortable with interacting with the uh, community right now with everything that's going on, you can come in and help us bag up items. We have bags and we have uh, sanitizer, we have Lysol, we have whatever you need, uh, but we do need hands to help uh, bag things. If you're going through your pantry and you have things that you're gonna toss out or you don't need and it's not expired, please feel free to reach out to us via email. Um, and you can drop off those perishable and non-perishable items. All things are needed in this time. On, third, on Wednesdays, we have the Daniel Fast. That's from 6 to 6, fruits and vegetables. Uh, the prayer focus is the continued thing of COVID-19. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then our prayer focus is Psalms 91. Also, we have corporate prayer every mo Thursday morning at 6.30. The same information for the noonday prayer. So if you say that information in your phone, you just use that to join noonday, I'm sorry, Thursday morning prayer. Um, you can come on and add prayer requests, praise reports. We want to hear it all. Please join on Thursdays at 630. And then just a reminder, our Sunday school and Bible study is on a break. We will announce through our announcements on Sundays when we'll begin the next session. So stay tuned on that. If during this time you need a uh, some devotionals or you need help on what you can just kind of study during this time, please reach out to us. We're more than happy to help as we go through this time. And also we have uh, different ways that you can contact us. Uh, our pastors have recently sent out a video uh, and it's been posted on YouTube and Facebook in reference to the phase one uh, beginning the next service. So if you didn't get that email, please reach out to us via email to let us know your updated email. 
And then I am done with the announcements and I will pass over to Minister Tom. Good morning. This morning, I want to address a, a real simple question, and that is a question that gets asked a lot in today's society, and that is, why do we tithe? And I think the best way to answer that question is to go to um, the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 10. It says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing for you such that you cannot receive, that there will not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. In every other situation in the Bible, God says to not test him, but this is one area where he says, Go ahead and test me in this. See who, see if I can't out bless you. So we do it out of obedience, but we do it so that God will bless our finances and that we will continue to see all of our needs being met on a regular basis. And since we're doing this online now, whether you are joining through Facebook, whether you're joining through Zoom or watching this later on YouTube, all of these options are still available for giving. Um, first, you can go to our website, www.bethel-worship.org, and click on the giving link. You can give through there. You can give through the Cash app, which is Cash B U C C I. You can call the office, take an appointment to stop in and drop it off, or you can mail it in to 3697 Pepperwood Court, Portsmouth, Virginia. All of these are valid options for you to give. So. I just want to thank those of you that have been giving and those of you that will be continuing to give. And we just praise you and we thank you. So let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a giving God. We thank you, Father God, that you are a gracious God. And today, Lord, we just ask you to bless the gift and bless the giver as we give of our tithes and offerings. And we give it all to you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. The song was open the eyes of my heart, Lord. And so we would like to welcome you to Bethel Worship Center Church International, uh, our Sunday service. Uh, praise God. I wanted to, before I begin, I wanted to put something out there. This last week, my beautiful co-pastor and myself, we put out a video and um, I was, and I, and I wanted to be clear about some of the things we were saying before we go, and I have a word for you. Uh, and so I really want you to stay tuned and stay in. Uh, I have a word that I believe is from the Lord, amen? But I want to be clear. One of the reasons why we are meeting and we continue to meet on Zoom is because as co-pastor and I was talking and I, and I apologize, I, I was a little tired that day and so, and I had a migraine, but uh, one of the things that we wanted to make clear is that one of the reasons why we're meeting is because we choose you. As leaders, one of the things you have to do as a leader and you have to realize as a leader is that our job as a leader is to make sure that others are able to get stronger, others are able to do this. And it's something that we take seriously. And so in a midst where if people are grappling for things and money or this or that or whatever, we purposely choose you because you are the people of Bethel. You are the God's people. You are the people uh, who God chooses to dwell his presence in. And so uh, in a, in a, sometimes you have to make a choice. And so we chose to actually stay home, to keep you guys safe, to keep you, um, to keep you guys uh, safe and to keep you guys um, healthy. And we don't wanna take any risk. It's not a thing of having a lack of faith or any of those things. We just believe God for you and we wanna keep you safe, amen? And so we will be meeting on Zoom because God has not released us and on Facebook to meet any other way at the present time. And so we'll be meeting on Zoom, as my father-in-law says, uh, Zoomites, and, um, or we'll be uh, Facebookites, or we'll be YouTube acts, and we're all, all three, as a matter of fact. But one of the things we definitely are is children of God, and so we will be meeting, uh, amen, on Zoom. Amen, so if you have your Bibles, I have a word for you, amen, and uh, this word has bothered me, but it is a, I believe it is a good word from the Lord. I even asked some of my pastors uh, and apostles and uh, elders who are in other areas and other fields of ministry, and even some of my brothers in Christ, I asked them to come on at some point and watch this video. Because how many of you know this? As a leader, even you have to be accountable at times. And so for what I'm about to say, I asked some of my brothers and sisters to uh, watch this at some point. And if they find anything in me or anything in what I say, then to bring it to my attention, amen? But if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to the book of Exodus. Chapter number 21, uh, I'm sorry, chapter number 12, uh, we'll begin at verse number 21. I won't read before you long, but I have a word that the Lord, I believe, has released me. And so I'm submitting this not only to you, but I'm submitting this to my brothers and sisters in ministry. Amen. Exodus chapter number 12, verse number 21. I'm going to cover a lot of ground. And so I'm praying that you guys, uh, you know, read in between the lines and read in between everything because I'm going to skip over some things to get to the things that the Lord showed me. Amen. Exodus 21. I'm sorry, 12, verse number 21. Amen. You ready? Let's get ready to read while I wave at my neighbor. Hi, neighbor. He's looking in the window. <laughs> then, you ready? Then, the, then Moses called for the elders of Israel and said to them, go and take a lamb for yourself according to the size of your families and slaughter the Passover lamb. And you shall take a branch of hyssop dipped in in blood, which is in the basin and touch some of the blood to the lintel that is above the doorpost, I'm reading in the Amplified Version, and to the, the two doorposts or side posts, and none of you shall go outside of the door of his house until morning. For the Lord will pass through and strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood <laughs> on the lintel, 
above the entryway and on the two doorposts. The Lord will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come in to your house and slay you. Father God, we thank you, God. We honor you. We love you. We praise you, God. You alone are God. Besides you, there's none. After you, there'll be no more. So God, we bless you. We praise you and we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Father, let every word that be said be a word that you gave. Make me the first hearer of your word. We bless you. Amen. I wanted to talk to you for just a second. There's so much embedded in this scripture, but I need to give you a quick history lesson on this scripture. Amen. Our scripture is actually, I, I, I came towards the end because sometimes God will start things from the end, even though he began a thing. In this verse of scripture, we are reading in this whole context of scripture, one of the things that had happened was Joseph and had brought the children of Israel and Egypt together, his anointing, because the anointing of God often brings people together. And they began to prosper in the land together, but the Bible says that one began to prosper and the other one began to look at what the other one had and they began to get jealous. And anytime you begin to prosper in a place, you have to continue to follow God because what happens is when both people don't begin to follow God, things begin to erupt. I'm going somewhere. And the children of Egypt got jealous of the children of Israel and arose a leader who did not know or respect the power of God or the name of those who God has sent. And they said, let's take them and enslave them and make them do work and do all the other stuff. And the children of Israel became slaves. And how many of you know that whenever you cry out to God, one of the keys that we talked about was the power of intercession. Whenever you cry out to God, God will send an answer. But he may not send an answer in the way you think. And last week we talked about how God had raised up Moses and God had raised up Moses and he raised and he made Pharaoh because he was prideful, raise up a person who would eventually one day begin to destroy him. There are some times that you have to look around in your house and see what's in your house. And Pharaoh uh, didn't understand how God worked. And so God raised up someone to replace Pharaoh. Now I need you to catch something because a lot of people understand that when Pharaoh took Moses in, Moses became the oldest son of Pharaoh. And all God had to do in this verse, in this group of scripture, if he wanted to settle the account, was raise up Moses and just allow Moses to grow up and Pharaoh to die, and Moses would automatically became Pharaoh. But God said, I don't want to do it that way, because if I do it the normal way, the way you think it should be done, then I won't get the glory out of it. And I came to tell you that God would never share his glory with anybody. God is not intimidated by us getting praise. God is not intimidated by us getting it, I think. But God will not share his glory with another. In other words, you can't rise up and start thinking you're God and think that things aren't going to happen. And so one of the things that happened was God raised up Pharaoh, I mean Moses, and, 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 and here's the thing for leadership, because I got something for everybody today. One of the things that Moses did was Moses made up excuses as to why he could not do what the Lord said do. And so God said, sin, I'll, I'll, I'll give you Aaron. And God will always give you leaders something that you can use to accomplish what God has for you. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying, but God gave Moses Aaron, and for every leader that also... God will give you other leaders to come alongside you and help you. Sometimes they'll challenge you. Everybody that challenges you in leadership is not your enemy. Sometimes people will challenge you or they'll say some things in love, in respect, behind closed doors or whatever, so that they can help you get to where you're called to be. Amen. I'm not intimidated by leaders. I'm not intimidated by my own leaders. Sometimes they say stuff and sometimes it, but you know what? I know that when God has given you certain leaders, that they are committed to where you're going and they're committed to your destiny. They just want to make sure that we get it there. And sometimes we don't always agree. Let me be clear. I don't know why I'm saying this, but sometimes we don't always agree but, uh, on, on, on but things. But they do agree that I'm the leader. And, and, and sometimes I hear them and I can tell they're saying, well, I think there's a better way, but we'll do it this way. And we, and we pray about it and we move on. And sometimes they'll say things and I'll be like, okay, I'm putting you in charge of it. Make it happen. Amen. And we'll do that. But listen, here is the thing that I need you to understand. That God told Moses 
and Moses and, and, and Aaron went to Pharaoh. And, and this is what God told Moses. He said, I want you to take the rod, take that thing that I gave you, you know, the, the rod, the, the, you know, the thing that budded. I want you to take that. I want you to take the rod and I want you to go to Pharaoh and I want you to give Pharaoh these words. And at the time, Pharaoh, the most powerful thing in Egypt, not only just in Egypt, but in, in, in that the world had known. People who, if you knew anything about Pharaoh, you knew that Pharaoh claimed to be God. And God told Moses to deliver this message. And so I'm telling this message to all the leaders who are secular and who are spiritual. That God said, let my people go. And here's the reason why. So that they will be free to worship me. I'm going to say that again. Let my people go so that they will be free to worship me. Amen. A lot of times as leaders, we place things on us and we make it and we hold the people hostage and we hold hostage their worship. We hold hostage their prayers. But God is saying, let my people go so that they'll be free to worship me. They'll be free to worship me. Let them let them go from their opinions. Let them go from this. Let them go from the, the need to see you all over and controlling everything. Let my people go so that they will be free to worship me. And I hear God saying that there's a lot of people who set up and there's a Pharaoh spirit that's been hindering the land and people are, 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 are pretending to be this and pretending to be that. And that false religion or that false ideology and what God is saying is let my people go so that they'll be free to worship me. I told somebody a while back that I believe God was putting people in time out. All right, you want to do that? I tell you what, you go sit over here and you have two seats. You have a seat. You have a seat. You have two seats. And here's the thing. I'm going somewhere with this because the first thing that God did, and I'm still giving you the history lesson, I, the, the part that I got for you is actually going to be short. I got to get, got to set this up. The first thing that God did when he did that to Pharaoh was God sent Moses and Aaron and he said, look, he says, take your staff. And he said, and when Pharaoh finished talking, he's going to get hard because I know how his heart is. And he says, Throw that staff on the ground. And Moses, and, and, and as they were talking, he told Joshua, he gave him the staff to throw this thing. Surely this is going to get him. And the Bible says that he threw it down. And there is a double-edged sword in that because when Moses threw that thing down, the rod, his staff, became a snake. I got to play with this for a little bit because I got to tell you as a leader, one of the things that you have to be aware of is that that staff, that rod that, that Moses and Aaron threw down represented their gift. And I wanted to let you know that God told me to tell you leaders in this age, in this dispensation, that there is a potential for a snake in every gift. There's a potential for a snake in every gift. But it's how you use it. It's how you, it's how you, it's how you do the thing. And the funny, funny thing about it was... The Egyptians had people who were spiritual, but they weren't godly. And see, the thing, the funny thing about spiritual people is they can produce some of the same things that godly people produce. Uh, but the thing that you know that separates the believer from the non-believer is that it won't last. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The things that they're producing will not last. The thing that they're producing will not last. Satan, I bind you right now in the name of Jesus. The, the, the thing that they're producing will not last. And so what wound up happening is they snake begin to swallow the other snake. And so fast forward, the, the, the plagues begin to come. And in every plague, God was saying, let my people go so that they'll be free to worship me. And here's the thing. The Egyptians were polytheistic people. They worshiped multiple gods. And so God says, I got to do something to let them know, because Mary, Moses, you asked me a question. You said, who shall I tell them sent me as if you don't know me? And he says, tell them I am that I am. And now modern translations make one thing, and it, but there's actually a two phase meaning to that. He says, tell them I am that I am. And I hear a lot of preachers and they preach and they dance and they say, tell them I am that I am and write the check. I am whatever you need. I am this and I am that and I am this and I am that. And, and, and I am healing. I am your this. I am. And all that is true. And we can hoop and we can holler and we can run and we can shop and we can hear music and keys playing. But one of the things that God said in this is that God said, tell them I am that I am. A lot of people don't understand this and they don't know this, but I was reading an old book 
And the book on Egyptian culture declared this one thing, that Egyptians worship a God that covered all the other gods that they didn't know about. So they just called him I am. In other words, the God, and he so what God was saying also, in addition to the right to check stuff, the, the I am whoever, is I am that I am. In other words, I am the God who is present. And I am the God that all these other gods are pretending to be. I am the original. I am the creator. I am the source. I am the sustainer. I am the only wise God. I am the only God. And I am that I am. I'm that one. I'm that one. I'm that I am. I'm that I am. I'm that I am. I'm that I am. He says, tell them to let my people go or else things about to go down. And, the, and Pharaoh said, whatever. In fact, Pharaoh said, you know what? <laughs> Watch this. Just to prove a point, I'm going to make them work harder and I'm going to do it with less stuff. And here's what happened. God says, okay, let's get ready to rumble. Ring the bell, ring the bell, ring the bell. And he says, one of the first things I'm going to do in the first place, I, I go over the place real quick so you catch it. God says, I'm going to dry up the now. I'm going to make the now turn to blood. What was God doing? God was killing a God in Israel. What God did on, on those 10 plagues was God took over every single God that the Egyptians had. The first one, the first plague of blood was the Nile. The, the Egyptians worshiped the Nile because the Nile was their source of power. They did everything by the Nile because all the water came from the Nile. When you're in the desert, you need water. And the Nile was their primary source of work, water. And so what God did when he kept on the desert was God picked the fight with the God Kanum, the guardian of the river. And God said, and since you want to get it, bring your boy, because one of y'all ain't enough. Bring your boy happy. And he says, and that was the God of, uh, of, uh, of annual flood on the Nile. Bring him. And while you're at it, bring Osiris with you, too. Bring your dog Osiris with you. I give you three for the price of one. I'm whooping all three of y'all at the same time. And God turned the Nile into blood. And the Bible says that every one of those things, he turned into blood. And, the, and, and But you know what? Pharaoh, they had some tricks. So they threw some Kool-Aid and some water, and they reproduced that too. And you know what? And, and God says, okay, I got you. See, because the enemy can counterfeit the things of God, but he can't do it for real. And then the second one was the plague of the frogs. God said, you know what? Bring Het. It's spelled H-E-T-Q-T. -E bring him. The Egyptian goddess of, with a head like a frog. Bring him or her or whatever you want to call it. I beat them too. God beat them. God brought the frogs on the land, controlled them, killed their everything. Just wiped out everything. The Bible even declared that the frogs were just popping out, out, out of people's ovens. And then God said, you know what? You produced the first two, but watch this. I'm going to show you something, partner. And so God says, bring the goddess Gabe, the god of, of, of life and the god of, 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 of all this stuff. And they came up from the earth and the, the lice and the gnats and, and they just covered them up over like the dust of the earth. And God was controlling the god Gabe. And then the fourth play, what, see, because they did the first three, they reproduced a little bit of the first three. But when it got to the fourth one, amen, after he had challenged all three, it got to Capri, which was the God of the flies. Now, they say the God of the flies, but actual uh, Hebrew and in and, 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 and the Hebrew language and different languages, this one says not only was it the God of the flies, but it was the God of mixed animals. In other words, hordes of animals, including and especially flies, begin to come up and begin to take over the land so much so that it began to kill the cattle and God controlled that God. And then God says, you know what? I'm sick of it. God said, bring Hatar, the God of the, of, of, of the calves. He made the cattle sick because they depended on the cattle to eat. God said, you know what? Watch this. Moses, take some dirt up and throw it up in the air, the ashes. And when he threw it up in the ashes, boiled, which God was controlling Imhotep, uh, and Isis, the God of health and the God of healing. God said, you know what? Let me get some boils on you. See how you like that. And so since they still didn't listen, because every time God controls something that they trusted, see, some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, but we were trusting the name of the Lord. They trusted those gods. And what God did was God controlled each and every single one of them. Let me go further. Let me go further. And so God says, you know what? Since we're going to go a little further now in plague seven, I'm going to control the God nut in UT. God says, I'm going to control that goddess. She's the goddess of the sky. Watch this. Nobody fly higher than I fly. I am God. And he says, and you know what? 
why, why, why you're bringing them, tell them to bring a daddy too. Go tell your daddy. Bring your father, your father's shoe, who's the God of the wind and the God of the air, who's supposed to be the calming God. Let's see what they do with that. Bring them on. And so God controlled that and God made a hailstorm. But God told the children of Israel to keep all their cattle inside. And then God says, and, and, and number eight, I'm almost done. I got three more to go. God says, now it's getting ready to get rough. So go to Pharaoh one more time and give him another chance. I thank God that he's always a God of another chance. And he says, go to Pharaoh. And so Moses went to Pharaoh. Moses went to Pharaoh. And Moses said, Pharaoh, God says, let his people go or else it's going to get really hard. You think them first ones was rough. God is about to take off the kid glove with you, man. Let, let's come on now. And Pharaoh said, you know what? I'm God. I'm God. So, hey, I ain't letting nobody go. And so God says, all right, let's bring it. So God says, bring the locusts. And that was God controlling Nefer and Nepri, who were the gods of grain and the gods uh, of disorder. And what God did was God allowed the locusts to devour everything. Listen, one of the things that God is doing was God was getting their attention. And have you ever considered that maybe God is getting our attention? God says, everything that you trust, everything that you believed in, everything that you held is valuable, now is out of order. And the only thing you can depend on is me. Listen, he says, the plague of locusts. And God says, I am the Lord your God, and you shall have no other gods before me. And so God sent the plagues of locusts, and God allowed those things to happen. And then God says, you know what? Pharaoh, since you say that you're God, and you say that you, you're God, and you say that you're the reincarnation of Ra, let's see how much power you got before you and before your people. He says, I'm going to make darkness. And the Bible says that it was so dark that the darkness can be felt. Have you ever been in a spiritual place where it was so dark that you can feel it? He says, I'm going to bring darkness. And the Bible says that the darkness was so thick that neither the sun shined and they couldn't block, they couldn't even see in front of them. They, the darkness was so thick they could touch it. And Moses repented. I'm sorry, not Moses, but Pharaoh repented. God changed it. And then guess what happened? It went right back to the way it was. See, there's a difference between repentance and deliverance. There's a difference between repentance. There's a difference between, see, I, I had somebody say one time, well, I'm sorry. And I asked the question, we were in counseling. And I said, are you sorry for what you did or are you sorry for you got caught? Because there is a huge difference between being sorry or being repentant for what you did and being sorry and, uh, and, and that you got caught. Because real repentance means change your mind, change your direction. We'll talk about that later. Um, but one of the keys is, uh, is this. God says, I'm controlling the plagues. Let me, let me go a little further. Check this out. Plague number eight, plague number eight, plague number eight. I mean, plague number 10 was the plague of the firstborn. God says, I'm judging all the Egyptians now. So just in case I left some of them out, which I didn't, God says, I'm, I'm controlling everything. And so God says, there is the plague of the firstborn. And so he says, I'm going to take all the babies, put them in a certain place. Pharaoh killed the babies before. He killed babies again. And he says, and now the plague of the firstborn. And so God told the children of Israel, our, our scripture, and God says, tell them to call all the elders. He said, tell them to call all of the elders. And he says, and when they call all the elders, he said, this is what I want you to do. He said, bring all the elders before me. I love that. I have a problem with this and I may get in trouble, but I hear God saying with all everything that's in me is that one of the reasons why we're in the predicament that we've come to is because we pushed aside the elders of our generation. You see, sometimes in the effort, and I, I remember going to a church and, and we would always talk about the new thing of God, the new thing of God. And we would say, bring all the people on the stage who are between this age and this age. And I've always had a problem with that because to me, the Joshua generation has nothing to do with age. It has to do with obedience. 
And so, and even though I love all my churches and everything like that, I used to always ask, why don't we call it the, the older ones, the older ones? And here's the thing. God says that a lot of times we push aside the elders and we push them aside because we wanted to reach for the new thing. But how many of you know that we will never have a new thing without the elders sitting in their right place? And so a lot of times we go for things because we're thinking that in order for us to get something new, we got to throw away some of the things that's old. And God never called us to throw away some of the old things. God called us to put them in their proper perspective. Amen. You don't throw away a player just because he, he got old. You change his position. Sometimes old players need to become coaches and old coaches need to become owners. And you understand what I'm saying? And so what wound up happening was God says, we pushed aside the elders and now we need them to be in their rightful place. He says, call all the elders to me, bring them all to me. And this is what I want you to do because there are some things that it takes an elder to get accomplished. Amen. Now, I know we can go to God for ourselves. I know, but there is a purpose for generational blessing. And God says, call the elders, call them, call the older ones to me. The one that you pushed the right side, the one that you said that their worship didn't mean anything. God says, call them back. He says, call them to me. He says, bring them out of hiding. Bring them off the rocking chair. Bring them off of their old folk home. Bring them off of this and off of that and sit them down and learn your history and learn who you are and let them tell you who you are. Let them tell you the history. Let them tell you. I know sometimes you get tired of hearing about the good old days and the, and the old this and the old that, but sometimes we got to sit down and let the elders tell us something because there's one thing that we've left out and one of the things we've left out in this message was the power of the blood. We know the power of giving. Giving it shall be given to you. Good measure, press down, shaking together, running over, and shall men giving you. And all that is true. We know, we, 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 we know, uh, as the earth remains, so is seed time and harvest time. We know that if you declare a thing, <laughs> it shall be so, and light shall shine on you. Yeah, we know all that. And that's true. But I remember my grandmother, when somebody would do something stupid, my grandmother said, oh, the blood of Jesus, the blood, the blood. And I'm like, what is this lady talking about? Is she a cannibal or something? But my grandmother would say the power of the blood. And we need some people who still know the power whew, of the blood of Jesus. God said, there'll be no new thing. I don't know why I'm taking time on this. There'll be no new thing unless we bring back some of the the things and put the, the we, we we have the ability but we lack wisdom what good is your anointing if you won't submit to nobody and we can hop from church to church the lord hammer from thing to thing from stuff to stuff and do this and do that but if we don't submit it to nobody i tell people all the time god wants your heart not just your gift and i and, and we lock you behind that God wants your heart, not your gift. God wants you healed. And God wants you ministering out of your healing and out of your overflow. Yes, sometimes you'll minister and you'll be hurt. But God wants you to be healed. And God wants you to be whole. And sometimes, and then some people will just go, they go from church to church. And people will use you for your gift. But once your gift is wounded, then they'll send you somewhere else and move on to the next and best thing. And, and, and we need people in the right place to be able to apply the blood. We need Titus type people. We need um, um, we need we need the older women. We need for the young women and the and the middle aged women to sit down at their feet and begin to so they can tell us who we are. We need the older men to begin to sit down and begin to tell us things and begin to speak to us. And I know I'm getting older, and so I kind of fit a little bit in both generations. But we need that people. Listen, and and and, and if I offend you, I meant to, and because let me be clear about that. Even though my back ain't hurting up here for nothing, just to be able to give you, I'm giving you what I know the Lord is saying. We need people to be able to stand in the gap. And, and, and we need people who don't just talk about God, but who know God. We need people who, are, who listen, on that prayer line, I'm telling you, we need people who will be able to, to speak for God and, and be able to, I know God. See, I can quote the same scripture that somebody can quote. But I may know the scripture, but they know the God and the scripture. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so we need people like that. Listen, he says, with hyssop, and this is the part I've been, I've been waiting to get here, with hyssop and with a basin. Listen, the hyssop represents the branch. 
and the basin is is is, is the is the, the bucket or the bowl or the, the pail. We need some people who can carry the blood. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We need people who are able to carry the blood. We need blood carriers. We need blood carriers, and we know people who know how and where to apply it. The problem isn't the, all this crazy stuff. The problem is we've lost our identity, and that's one of the reasons why we need to call for the elders to, to, to sit in their rightful place. We need to call for people to sit in their rightful place and begin to apply the blood of Jesus and to show us how to apply the blood of Jesus. He said, put it over the door pole, over the lintel. The lintel is the top of the door. He says, we need to apply the blood over the doorpost and, and uh, over the lintel and over the doorpost of every believer and, 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 and listen. And this is what he said. We need people who know how to apply the blood. But he says, but, but when the Lord comes by, mm, episode ago, he said, when the Lord comes by, he says, and I see the blood. He says, I would see the blood. And I pass over the door. See, I, I think the thing that we, we didn't realize is that he says, when I see the blood, as I pass over the door, he says, I will rebuke the devourer. But we assume that Passover meant that the Lord left. But that's not what it's, what it's saying. He's saying that when I see the blood, I'm going to stop where I see the blood. And I'm going to tell the enemy that as he goes to keep on moving, you can't stop here. You can't stop here. And, and one of the things that we need is, is and, and he made a profound statement, and, 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 and I'm, I'm about to cringe as I say this. But listen, elders, he said, propel them to stay in. And I have a problem with some of that part because I know the power. And one of the things that God is saying is that you can have your people and you can put the blood over your doorpost, but you got to keep it. If they don't want to stay in when they go out, if they don't, if they want to go out and leave from under the covering of the blood, then they can't say that they weren't protected. They can't say that they weren't. They, the only thing they can say is that they left their covering. And so we got to propel these people to come into the house. I said, propel these people to come into the house and get covered under the blood. And get covered under the blood. Because listen, the blood still works. The blood still works. I said, the blood still works. The blood of Jesus still works. It was that same blood that killed, that was killed and covered the nakedness of Adam. It was the same blood that was found in Exodus. It was the same blood that was found in Genesis when God killed the nameless ram to, kill, to cover the nakedness. It was the same one when, 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 when John was standing in the river saying, behold the Lamb of God. It was the same one in, 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 in Exodus, the same one in Leviticus, same one in Numerus, the same one in Deuteronomy, the same one in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. It's the same one. The blood of Jesus still works. And it's the same one that found the revelation from Genesis to Revelation, from everlasting to everlasting. The blood still works. But we got to learn to work the blood. And listen, here's the thing. When the enemy comes at you, the enemy comes at you. And the enemy is trying to convince you that the blood don't work. And you plead the blood of Jesus. My grandma used to say, I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead. In other words, it was almost like she was pleading the legal case. Lord, I know this. I know this. But I plead the blood of Jesus over him, God. Save my baby. Save my this. Save my this. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. And old folks, saints, young folks, middle-aged folks, parents, you have a right and a responsibility to plead the blood over yourself over your children, over your things. Apply the blood of Jesus over it. Purge this dead work. God, don't let them go down and do this. Don't let them do this, God. God, their life is in your hands, God. So we lay them over the altar, God, and we cover them in your blood. And let me show you, this is what it looks like whenever the enemy comes in and the enemy comes in to try to destroy you and the enemy comes in to try to kill what it is that God has for you and when he comes in and he sees the blood he comes in and the Bible says that he's covered under the blood you see the blood still works and he's covered but see here's the thing about the blood of Jesus you can't be half covered you can't be half covered saints 
You got to be covered under the blood. You can't be half covered. You got to be whole. You got to be covered under the blood completely. And God, I surrender. I give myself over to you, God. And, and see what happens is when the enemy comes by, the enemy comes by to destroy you, to devour you. But when you're covered under the blood, he can't see you. And so you got to tell the enemy, Satan, you can't see me. You can't see me. You can't see me because I'm covered under the blood. I'm covered under the blood of Jesus. I'm covered under his, under his covering. I'm covered. I'm covered. I'm covered. I'm covered. You can't see me because I'm covered. And so the enemy will come at you. Listen, and, and, and I keep hearing the Lord say that we got to begin to get everything. I know you're having trouble in your marriage. But I dare you. 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 Honey, come here for I dare you. I know you're having trouble in your marriage, but one of the things we want to teach you how to we see you may be, look, I dare you that you're having trouble in your marriage, but get covered under the blood. Get covered under the blood. Get covered under the blood. See, because the blood of Jesus, it still works. And when the enemy comes and the enemy comes to see you, he can't see you because you're covered. Men, learn how to cover your families under the blood. Women, learn how to cover your families under the blood. Plead the blood of Jesus over them. But see, you can't plead the blood of Jesus and you standing outside of the covering yourself, brothers. And you can't plead the blood of Jesus and, and, and you standing outside of, 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 of and you're standing outside yourself, sisters. Because what winds up happening is when you when you do that, the enemy sees you. You see, the blood of Jesus, it, it shows, and that's one of the reasons why even in Revelation, they were dipped in blood. Because when they are covered, they're covered in their blood, and the enemy, when he comes to attack, all he sees is what God did on Calvary. I came to tell you this. One of the things that if we're going through tough times, family. But listen, if we are going to ever get through these tough times, we got to learn to apply the blood of Jesus. We got to release the elders. We got to get people in their proper place. We got to begin to get people in their proper place. We got to learn to apply the blood. Because listen, family, I don't know who I'm talking to, but the blood still works. And so I plead the blood of Jesus over my children. I plead the blood of Jesus over your children. Listen, it didn't say, uh, not, see, in the old days, they had to be home. But now, when Jesus died on Calvary, there's a, there's a thing, and proximity is not a, 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 a thing of, a, 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 is a thing of the past. You can apply the blood of Jesus no matter where they are. And so I say this, I plead the blood of Jesus over them, God plunge this dead work, Father. Father, I speak life over our children, Father. No matter what they're in, Father, if they're smoking or doing whatever it is they're doing, I, I don't care, God. Whatever it is they're doing, God, we give you as the elders in their, in their, in their lives permission to move in and, 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 and convict and love and, and embrace and wrap your arms around them, God. Let them feel your embrace, Father. Father, if they're in jail, Father, no matter where they find themselves, God, I, we plead the blood of Jesus over them, Father. Let them feel your comfort. Let them feel, and, 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 and don't let the devourer have them, Father God. We speak life over our jobs, over our finances, over everything that we have. God, I speak over my mind, over my soul, over my back, over whatever it is that you've given me authority over, Father. And we plead the blood of Jesus over it. Listen, I'm going to say this one more time. We have to begin to release the elders. I said it like I'm releasing a beast. I, I, I feel we got to begin to release the elders, release the elders. I sound like I'm saying release the cracking, release the elders, let them get in their rightful place. Them being in their rightful place has nothing to do with us being in our rightful place. And so we can listen to them. We can hear what they're saying. We can allow them to pray. We can still give them the place of honor and we can still bring it home and do what it is we need to do. Listen, elders, I'm going to say this because it's time for you to wake up. Just because you lack strength physically, some of you, it doesn't mean that you lack strength at all. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Just because you're not as physically strong as you used to be, it doesn't mean that you're not strong spiritually and mentally. And so begin to open up your mouth. When you declare a thing, it will be so, so that light will shine on your path. Listen, young people, you got to learn the power of getting under and submitted. Young people, medium-age people, you got to learn. I, 
listen, I, I don't know why I'm feeling led to just share all my business, but a while back I wrote a poem and we were having a, a, a poetry night, I think it was, and I, I'll get back on topic. And I made a profound statement. Somebody asked me to get up and quote a poem. And at that time, I was feeling grieving and mourning. And because my, my biological father is, you know, he just died or what, you know, and everything like that. And that's a long story. And I wrote a poem. And that poem said, if I had only knew my fathers, if I had only knew my father, if I only knew my stepfather, if I had only knew, if I had only known them. You see, because young men need their dad, but middle-aged men do too. Old men need them, they do. Young women and young men need their mother and father. But older ones do too. And right now we have a lead, a leaderless society as far as spiritually. I'm not throwing jabs at any leaders or anything like that. I'm just telling you the truth. God said, if we're going to get through this tough and troubled time, we have to put things and people in their right perspective. And one of the things we got to do is we got to restore the elders. We got to restore those to their rightful place. There are elders right now with wisdom, with this and with that. And they're in exile and they're sitting somewhere in the chair feeling like nobody values them anymore. Feeling like they don't have a place anymore. Feeling like they don't have anything anymore. And the other day we was on the prayer line and one of the sisters in Christ, I think it was a lady to share um, and, 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 and several other women and several other men begin to declare and they begin to say some things about older people. And I was sitting there dancing because God had put it on my heart and, I, and God hadn't released me to say anything. But we got to begin to release those things and those people and put them in their proper perspective, saints. And so I say this to you. I plead the blood of Jesus over you. We plead the blood. We plead the blood of God, cover them. No matter where they are, if they're depressed, cover them, God. I know what it feels like to be so depressed that you don't even want to move. God, cover them. I know what it feels like to live in fear. God, cover them, God. God, release, God. I know what it feels like to feel unvalued and unwanted and to feel like I don't have a place anymore, God. God, cover them, God. Listen, if you have not left this earth yet, your purpose is not over. God still has a plan for you. I don't care whether you eight months or 80. God still has a purpose for you. I don't care if you're not as strong as you used to, used to be. You're stronger now than you probably ever will be. And God says, I still can use you. God says, if I hadn't taken you home, I still have a need for you, saints. And God says, let's begin to seek me on how to get in your rightful place. There's a place for everybody in this thing, and we got to begin to find it. We got to find people who can carry the, the, the uh, oil. Listen, listen, let me encourage you Christians. I know that right now being a Christian can be unpopular. And I can understand, I, got, right. I can understand why. I know I gotta throw my hands up. Because sometimes some 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 of some of the brothers are be like, oh bro, you you I don't know about what you're saying right now. But listen, when everything gets thick, people are gonna want somebody who know how to handle the hyssop, who know how to handle and carry the blood who know how to pray, who know how to intercede, who know how to apply the blood of Jesus, who know how to go into a home that's demonically possessed and begin to pray and begin to see that thing cast it out. Listen, there's a still a place for you, saints. I don't care how old you are. And so I want to pray, but listen, before we begin to pray, listen, maybe you don't understand and maybe, you do, maybe you're an Egyptian right now because here's the crazy thing about that, saints. I know God says that he's supposed to destroy the Egyptians, but there were Egyptians who bought into the whole Hebrew thing, just like it was in the days of Hagar. And they went into the house and they were spared. Listen, no matter who you are, you may not know the Lord right now, but if you want to come in, there's ways that you can do that. We can go online. We can go online. We can go online and you can begin to release. And so right now we're going to ask you, if, if you are seeking the Lord and you want to invite the Lord in to become your Lord and personal Savior, all you got to do is begin to pray. 
And so I'm going to turn it over to Copac. But if you want to receive the baptism, the Holy Spirit, or whatever it is you want to do, if you need prayer, we have Facebook, we have Zoom, we have our Tuesday prayer. You can come on. But I want to let you know that God still has a plan for you. No matter what you see around you, God still has a plan for you. And so we cover you under the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. What a powerful word today. Um, I don't know if you got uh, as much as I did out of it, and I pray you got even more, but it was such a powerful word. So thank you, Pastor, for uh, that awesome word that uh, the power of knowing our elders and, 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 and sitting under our elders is in Titus, like he mentioned, that the older should train the younger. And so I want to just take a few moments to encourage those who have not received Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior, um, or maybe you have received him and you've fallen away, you've what some people would call backslidden, um, where you've gone your own way, or uh, Pastor preached about the prodigal son last week, where you know you go you go your own way um, as opposed to following the Lord. And so um, I want to pray with you. So whether you've received Christ before, or you're just coming back to the kingdom of God, or or you've gone astray, um, or you're just coming in, I want all of us to just come together and pray just uh, to receive God and to ask him to come into our hearts. Lord God, we pray right now that you would forgive us of our sins, yes, Lord. that you would wash us completely clean, and that you would make us whole. We ask you, Jesus, that you would come into our heart, that you would save our soul, and that you would make us whole. We believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Yes, Lord. We believe that Jesus died on the cross, and we believe that he rose on the third day. And he's seated at the right hand of the Father right now. Thank you for coming into my heart, Jesus. Help me to live this life for you. I plead the blood of Jesus over my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. So if you prayed this prayer with us for the first time, or you prayed this prayer and you're rededicating your life, we want to encourage you to reach out to us. We want to encourage you. You can reach out to us. Um, if you're on Zoom, you can put it in the chat. Uh, if you're on Facebook, you can put in a comment. You can visit our website, Bethel-worship.org. Uh, you can reach out to us through um, the phone line, through email, um, any, any which way that you would like to reach out to us. We are more than welcome. Um, we, we more than want to hear from you. Um, we just thank you for joining with us today. And we pray that you have a great and awesome day, honey. Amen. And uh, can, can you come here? I, I got to do something because I know a lot of times leaders are phony. And um, I apologize for saying that I offended some of you. Um, a, a few weeks ago, I mean, not a few weeks ago, several hundred years ago, it seems like, I injured my back in Desert Storm. And um, and so my back, while I was actually in the middle of preaching, locked up and it's locked up right now, even as we speak. And so if you don't mind saints, uh, I know I pray for you on a regular basis. Can you pray uh, as co-pastor prays for me? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of being one of those type of leaders who, you know, I, I believe God is a healer. And so we just, can you just pray for my back to loosen up? My back started locking up while I was preaching. And so, Hey, it is what it is. Amen. So if you can stretch your hand forward towards the computer screen, phone, uh, TV screen, whatever you have, stretch your hand towards pastor. And we're going to pray and go before the Lord and plead the blood of Jesus over him. Father God, we just pray right now, Father God, over pastor and over his back. Lord God, you gave him a powerful word. And so we speak to this back right now and we say to loosen up in the name of Jesus. I speak to the muscles and to the tissue 
root and to the bone, Lord God. I speak now even to the veins, Lord God, and the blood that's flowing through his body. Father God, and I ask right now, God, that you touch his back in Jesus' name. Lord God, we pray healing to flow through his body now in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you, Lord, for visiting his back even right now, touching his back, loosening it up now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I speak to pain and I say to be gone now in Jesus' name. I speak to the injury that took place that caused his back. I pray healing 100% wholeness now in the name of Jesus. God, we want to thank you in advance for touching his back, for bringing healing to it, for letting it feel better. God, and we plead the blood of Jesus over his back because you said that by your stripes, yes, God. by the blood of Jesus, that he's already healed and he's already whole. And we thank you for it, God. We bless you for it, God. We magnify you for it, God. We thank you, God, because you move in miracles. You move in signs. You move in wonders. You move in healing. And after he's done this work for you, Father God, I ask, Lord, not because he's done the work, God, but because you are God and because you're a healing God, that you would touch him and make him whole. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so listen, I want to reiterate that God loves you, and God is there for you, and God cares for you, and God knows where you are, and he knows where you're going. And I want to reiterate that God has a plan for you. No matter how old you are, no matter where you find yourself, God knows who you are, and he knows exactly where you're going. And so, Father, we bless you for your children. We thank you. God, we speak life over them, God. We speak that they'll be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed in when they come and when they go. And God, we just honor you on today. And so listen, if they need prayer, uh, make sure you stay on. But Father, we bless your children. Bless them in the city. Bless them in the field whenever they come and they go. I pray that the enemies would come at them one way, but they will flee in seven or seek to be uh, their friends and bless them. I speak reconciliation in everything that they do. And God, I pray that you would keep them safe and keep them healed. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And so, listen, we want you to go in peace and enjoy the favor of the Lord. Amen. Again, if you want prayer, stay on. Remember our ways to give, but we love you and we will see you back here next Sunday. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Go in peace and enjoy the favor of the Lord.